Hi, my name is Deborah L. Welty, and I'm a certified teacher of decorative art. Today I am going to show you how I create a simple mixed media project. I begin by choosing some paper crafting items, and they come in a package of, this one had 58 elements in it, and I just dump them out and I pick out the ones that I like the colors the best. And then I choose my paint, and I use DecoArt Americana paint for my paints. I get out my elements, I kind of look at them and go, well, I pick out something big. So that's going to be my anchor piece. And I think today I'm going to keep it down. I can't decide whether it's the right or the left. And I'm going to have it kind of hang off, but that's going to be the idea of where I'm going to place this when I get to that point. These are the types of colors I'm going to use. So I've chosen more of the blue-violet range. I have deep periwinkle, grape juice, dioxazine purple. I may use a little wisteria, so I've got a lighter value in here. I have a small gallery-wrapped canvas. I'm going to take my acrylic paint and I'm just going to squirt it right directly onto my canvas. I'm kind of random about it. I have to be careful not to get too much paint when I'm doing this or I have too much in my ruler when I get done. Blob of this, a blob of that. It doesn't always come out easy, but it works out in the end. Maybe this one might not be dark enough to give us a good contrast. You need at least a light, medium, and a dark value of your paints. You can also throw in some type of an accent color if you're careful when, you, when you're rolling it in. I could throw, like, say, a touch of blue-violet in here. I'm going to do some accents of the lime green since it's in my little my pieces that I've chosen. But we could put a little blue-violet. You don't need to be very precise about this. And then I have a sponge roller, and you can get these at your craft and hobby stores. And then I just start rolling. You don't want to over roll this. My blue looks a little bit bright, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I said don't over roll it stop it it is you know before you over blend it and don't forget to roll the sides there seems like there's always enough paint in here that you can get the sides rolled too See a little bit there that didn't get covered with paint, so I can kind of come back in. And it doesn't have to be all perfectly covered, but if you see an area that really bothers you, you can cover it a little bit. But this will start to dry quite quickly, and you don't want to lift your paint by playing around. So resist, 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 resist playing, which I'm playing so very quick. We're going to call that good. And I just stuck my roller in water right now, but you should go and wash your roller out when you're done. And here's my element that I'm going to use. And I want to add some type of stenciling on here too. And I've just, I've just randomly chosen some things. Um, these are stencils by DecoArt. Here's one that says, Life is Good, Adventure, Explore. I think life is good might be kind of a nice saying to add to this. I want to use something that's just going to show up. It might be in my accent colors or it might be like a lighter or a darker value of what I've used for my background colors. So I'm going to go ahead and get out some sour apple because it's a nice bright green. And I think that will be pretty. I'm going to squirt it on a palette that's specially designed to be used for acrylics. And get some of my lighter values too. I'm 
I don't need much paint. This won't take very much paint at all when we go to do this. I might even want a little bit of a darker green in here some places. So we could get a little of that out. I'm using festive green this time. And I also, I love metallic colors. Festive green in the metallics is one of my favorites. So I like to have some metallics on my palette to work with. And I also have a purple pearl. And I love glitter. You can see that the objects that I've chosen are glittered already, but I like to add a little more glitter to what I'm doing. I'll get some glitter out here on my palette. And see, while I'm doing this, it's giving my background a chance to dry. dries fairly quickly depending on how warm it is I think that I will add the saying life is good I never like things straight so I'm thinking maybe I'll put it up here at an angle but if I want my element to be here then they probably should balance each other this is kind of heavy and large this will be larger I better balance it out by putting it in the opposite corner. I'm doing my stenciling with a cosmetic sponge, the triangular ones, because I can use this bottom edge and I can use a different color on each side as I'm working. I don't want this to be overly jumping out, so I'm gonna be like cautious as I start out here. I'm gonna go into the wisteria And I pounce it in, I just get a little bit of it on the edge of my sponge and I work it in so that I don't have a heavily, heavy application of paint there. And then I'm going to pounce, pounce. That looks pretty bright. So I think I need to tone that down a little bit. I'm going to grab just a little bit of this metallic purple. I want it to show up but I don't want it to jump off the canvas. So now I'm going to have to kind of blend these two. It might have worked good for me to have chosen my medium value of deep periwinkle to begin with. But we'll see how this turns out once we lift it up. When you're choosing the word stencils for words that you want to have show up, make sure that the lettering is crisp. If you choose some of them that they're not connected very well and you go to do these lighter these lighter stencils. Sometimes they can look a little strange because they're not connected. They don't show up quite right. So the, the G in good is a little bit strange, so we'll have to see what happens when I lift the stencil off, if I'm going to like it. And I do hold on to it and I do peek because it's on a canvas, it's not too likely to slide. We'll just add a little bit more paint until we're sure we can see what we're doing. You can see my lettering. I think I could use it just a little bit darker over here on the G. And I like having different values on my letters. It's a little more interesting. So we're still having some trouble with that G, the, the D on the good. I don't want to get too much paint because if I do, it's going to squish out underneath. And, you know, that shows up. I know it's really pale, but I just don't want it to knock you off of here. If I like some of the other words, life is good, maybe you like to hear, maybe you'd like to say celebrate. We could add the word celebrate in here. And since we're angled this way this time, let's angle our celebrate another direction. We could try here. Let's find out what happens if I stencil this with some green. You don't know till you try. So I'm going to use a little sour apple on here. Light application of paint. And I could stop now and peek at it. That is pretty. That's working well. So we're going to continue with that. 
if I think this is going to end up being too bright in the end, I can put a little of the festive green metallic over it and tone it down. Let's get our letters all sponged in. I find that I can control my paint a little bit better using these cosmetic sponges. Different manufacturers do make daubers that have spongy ends and that might work well for, for some of you. You may want to try those. So I'm going to come back with some of my festive green. This will tone it down. It won't be quite as bright that way. And of course, I like the metallic shimmer that I get from doing that. So we've added a whole other element of color to that. And since I've introduced this green, I will pick up a three-quarter inch brush. It's dry. And I am going to, I'm going to start with the glitter. And I'm going to very gently, with a dry brush, I'm going to introduce some green onto my canvas to make it a little more interesting. You know, because there's green in here, this will help it all tie together. Go right over top of my stenciling. The trick here is to have very, very small amount of paint on your brush. See, I had a little too much. Made a little bit of a dark area. That's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Get some of this glitter going. Try some of the purple glitter. You can cover the entire canvas with the glitter if you like lots of glitter. And I'm going to grab a little of the purple. And I'm always trying to make sure, am I going to keep within the family of colors that I've chosen to use so I don't get too crazy here. Yeah, let's tone it down with a little bit of the festive green metallic, dazzling metallics. This is also by DecoArt. That'll help tone this down just a little bit. Keep me in the range that I want to be in. This is where my flower is going to go. And I have some other things here that I can use. I have, I'm rinsing my brush in water. That's what you're hearing here. I don't want to leave the paint in my brush. I would like to add some dragonflies. That's a bright, pretty one if I want a larger one and maybe I'm not going to have a whole lot else going on. I've got some little ones here that tie in. I just start playing with it at this point. I lay some things on. I look at how it looks. Do I like that look? Is that where I want to head with it? I've got some really nice leaves here. I think those would be good. Attached randomly. They bring a little more of the green back into the picture. And I have another stencil here. It is a, a, a DecoArt Americana, the Victorian Baroque. I like this because I like the movement that's going on. So what I'm thinking of using this one for I like that large dragonfly, so let's remove these elements, and I think that's a pretty decent spot for him. Um, not sure what I've gotten on my canvas right there. Something sticky. So I'm going to just move my dragonfly up to cover that up. But I like that dragonfly, and I'm going to use this stencil to be part of his flight pattern. So I'm going to lay it there, and I'm going to pull the dragonfly away. And I'm only going to use these couple of elements when I go to stencil. And he's got a lot of greens in him, so let's, let's start stenciling his flight path with some green. And I don't want to hurry so much that I get too much paint on. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to lightly stencil this. Throw in a little metallic to... I'm sure when he's flying around, he's, he's letting off a lot of little sparkles as he's having fun swooping around this flower and checking it out. Almost got that too heavy. And if you're afraid that you're going to get it where you don't want it, then you can put some tape over the areas that you do not want to get painted when you're stenciling. 
I have pretty good control with this because I can sneak right up to areas and I don't really get into them. But when I'm doing a larger stenciling area, sometimes I do take things down. Okay, there I've got a nice flight pattern. And I'll pick my butterfly back up and I'll say, yeah, that looks great. He looks like he's having fun. And I've got this little guy over here I'm gonna use. So let's see what we can use. We've got a smaller type of a flight pattern right there. So we will do the same thing here. And that little guy, maybe we're gonna use a little bit of purple in his flight path. Like we did for our stenciling up here, maybe we'll mix our wisteria and our purple pearl. And again, I gotta work it in so I don't get it too heavy. Oops, I gotta be careful there. A little bit too much paint. And we will just tap that in. Oh good, it came out nice and light. We've just got a real soft lavender flight path there for that little guy. Or I might decide maybe he's too small for that area and I've got another one. I'll add him instead. We think about this, we think about that. That's a really a pretty nice arrangement. And what I always recommend to people is try an arrangement and take a picture of it and then try another arrangement before you start gluing it down. And we had decided we wanted some leaves. You may want the leaves to hang off. You may want them to help cover up something. Maybe you want a smaller leaf, a bigger leaf. Just kind of play with your arrangement. You might want it hanging off over here. It might look better sticking over to here somewhere. Maybe the leaves don't add a thing to it. And you go, nah, I'm not sure I like that. I might want to take that away or I might want to stick that guy there. And then I also love jewels. So I like to buy those big boxes full of all kinds of wonderful colors. And then I start playing with my jewels. Sometimes it's kind of fun to like stick them over your letters, like in the middle of this E. Or, it would, there we go. That looks great, right there in the middle of my flower. And I might like, I think I brought here, I've got some green ones. I could put some out here at the tips of these swirls. And you should just play with it. Think about keeping it as random as possible. Don't get it too heavy in certain places. Don't put a whole pile of them somewhere. Now I'm feeling as I look at this that there's nothing going on down here. I might want to look at what do I have, what could I use that would help fill that in. Maybe I should take another piece of these swirls and just have it coming out down here farther so that we could fill this area in and so that it's just, because it just looks like something's missing here. And as you design these, you don't really know what's gonna happen until it happens. And you add a little bit of this and a little bit of that until you come up with something that you like. And once I decide what I like, as I said, I take a picture of it with my phone and then I dump everything back off and I start gluing it on and then I have my phone, my photograph from my phone as a reference to where my elements are supposed to go. And I usually use Aileen Super Tacky Glue to make it stay. That guy's a little too bright, isn't he? I'll try putting my stencil back on and I'm gonna tone it down with my festive green metallic. And if I wanted, I could even see what happens if we throw a little purple glitter over top of this. Tone it down a little bit more. So I don't want it to be too bright. Just, there we go, I've got a little something going on down there. I think I'm liking this. I'm gonna play around with more of the jewels Maybe I'm gonna put them over the O. Oh, that's too bright, I don't like that one. So it's all up to you how you wanna finish this off. I do use a lot of jewels 
to me, the more jewels, the better, the more glitter, the better. If I don't think this is glittery enough, then I can pick my paintbrush up again and I can come back with some more of this limelight. This is called Glamour Dust and the color is Lime, Dut, Lime Light by DecoArt. All of these products are available at decoart.com. If you like my designs, you can go to my Facebook page at Quality Art and see more of the designs that I have. I have e-packets available. And you can also check out my other videos on my YouTube channel by doing a search for Deborah L. Welty. And if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. I will be happy to give you advice and, and help you out and tell you how I come up with these things. Thank you so much for joining me today.